Good morning, everybody. And welcome to day three of Genetic Genealogy Ireland 2015. So it's nice to see so many people getting up so early in the morning to come and uh, listen to Jared Corcoran. Uh, Jared is the uh, Irish representative for the International Society of Genetic Genealogy. He works very, very hard to promote genetic genealogy within Ireland, especially behind the scenes, lobbying government officials and a variety of local uh, government uh, personnel to actually uh, promote genetic genealogy Ireland, especially within uh, an Irish context. So it gives me great pleasure to um, introduce Jared and just make sure that the recording is on, that's fine. And he's going to give us an update on the state of genetic genealogy in Ireland today. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Jared Corker. Uh, thank you, Morris. And as this is an update, it's not a full lecture, so it'll be about 20 minutes. I'll go through it uh, fairly quickly. The objective is to tell you what we're doing here, what we want to do, and what we're planning to do for next year. And uh, one of uh, our key focus areas is on Irish surnames. We have a poster uh, out there on the wall, which you may want to look at. It's, a, uh, it's taken from the 1891 census. It's produced by ESRI, which is the leading mapping company. And this is an award-winning map, uh, where, where they've mapped pretty much all of the... Uh, the births in Ireland in 1891, according to um, uh, county and locality and so on and so forth. And uh, we're working with ESRI to produce more analytical type maps on SNP analysis and so on and so forth. We've done quite a few drafts. They're not really ready for publication yet, so hopefully by next year's uh, GGI 2016 we'll have uh, something to show. Uh, we do... Um, this is the geogenealogy of Irish surnames. We do ge geographic analysis, SNP analysis, surname clouds, uh, phylogenetic mapping, mapping surnames to the phylogenetic tree, uh, uh, mapping to the clans of Ireland, to the ancient clans, to the um, uh, surnames and map. We also uh, work with Alex Williamson on his big tree for next generation sequencing and mapping surnames onto that. Uh, doing surname mapping and surname origins. There's another poster which is outside, and, and this is all about Irish migrations. And uh, on our Pinterest board, we have about uh, over 8,000 topics now. Uh, pretty much all of the academic papers which come out, we post them up there. Anything which is relevant to migrations into Ireland or out of Ireland, we we post the major conclusions of them with a little bit of um, uh, analysis. Uh, so uh, it's going the ancient migrations into Ireland, uh, out of Ireland, ancient DNA, which is accelerating. We heard from Dan Bradley that we will probably have 20 samples available in the next couple of years that they're sequencing from all of the major eras, from Neolithic, Bronze, Iron Age, uh, early Christian era. Um, we look at the Bronze Age, which is a critical era. It was the Golden Age in Ireland when <laughs> there was a lot of golden art art artifacts were actually found, but it was also a period of, of expansion. Uh, the Iron Age, uh, Celtic migrations, early Christian, and the migrations out of our, or, or the wanderings of the Irish monastic movement out of Ireland all over Europe. Uh, Vikings, when the Vikings came in, the Norman migrations, and the later Anglo-Saxon migrations. And again, you can see uh, all of this on the poster outside, and uh, the Pinterest boards are updated on a daily basis. This year was a particularly rich year in terms of findings and understanding of Indo-European migrations. We had uh, landmark uh, studies from Branteal, which... Uh, uh, showed the expansion of the mitochondrial DNA H in particular uh, during the uh, middle-late Neolithic. Uh, we had the landmark papers from Rykeal, which I identified the steppe migrations uh, from the east into Europe. So uh, we had gone from having two major 
uh, understanding of two major migrations, the Mesolithic hunter-gatherers, the Neolithic, and then we found the third one, which was the Bronze Age steppes migration. Right? Uh, the, there's been a lot of debate about the Anatolian or the steppe hypothesis. In fact, there's a major conference going on in Germany this week uh, in, in Jana, and uh, most of the leaders from genetics like Hack, Reich, Alan Toft, uh, Brandt uh, will be there. Leading arche archaeologists will be there. The leading linguists will be there. Um, uh, John Cock will be there. Um, uh, Lord Renfrew. So hopefully this week there should be a lot of good debate uh, about resolving between the Anatolian or the Steppe hypothesis. And then, uh, of course, the major study this year was the Allentoff study, uh, which identified the Yamana uh, genetic signature, which was R1b. And of course, we know that R1b is the absolute dominant signature, which is found in Ireland. And uh, we have done uh, the, the major helper group in Ireland is L21, that's a branch. There are three main branches under P312, L21, U152, and uh, DF27, right? And, and so we, we have done extensive uh, uh, analytics on the frequencies of these, uh, the expansion, tried to estimate um, uh, to match them to the archaeological finds and the linguistic evidence available. Uh, so all, all of this again is on the, um, uh, the Pinterest site. And one of the things we, we'd like to do is uh, uh, we have um, I've taken this book here which is the largest source I suppose of ancient genealogies in Ireland. It's a great book of genetic uh, uh, gene genealogy, which was produced in the 16th century by McFirbish. And uh, I've donated or lent my copy of it to the Gene Genealogy Society of Ireland, who is just behind us here. And our plan is to get it digitized, indexed, uh, and put online, and then gradually to start mapping these ancient genealogies to the phylogeny phylogenetic tree. As we saw some from some of the previous presentations, the phylogenetic tree has expanded dramatically in the last year. We sometimes call it the SNP tsunami. And uh, so we, we have a lot more data which is available to allow this mapping between the phylogenetic tree and the ancient genealogies. Of course, we will find that that many of them won't match. Of course, you won't. Many of the genealogies were fabricated but we will find that some of them do, and, and the, the process will be try and uh, determine which ones are good and which are bad. We have collected, um, Bart Jasko did a, a lot of work on ancient genealogies, or, or the, the chiefly uh, uh, pedigrees, and uh, these are available, and again we will look at indexing these and uh, mapping them to the phylo phylogenetic tree. This is an example of the latest phylogenetic tree for L21. It's very detailed. If you imagine, uh, if you, a couple of years ago, you would have had perhaps five major SNPs below the main uh, L21. So now um, uh, we, it's expanding every day. So, so, so we are getting a lot more detail. It's coming into the historic period for the SNPs which are named, and this should allow us to, um, uh, to match them to known personages uh, who, who are around in the historic period. And some of those which have already been identified are, for example, Eli O'Carroll, which is a, a SNP under DF21, uh, the monster, as we saw from Elizabeth and Finbar uh, yesterday, is C4466, and also the Dalkash, uh, L226, uh, the Canal Connell, DF25, uh, Galodlas, Gaelic, the Connetta M222, the, the Royal Stuart <coughs> Line, which is under uh, DF41, and the Dalreed in Scotland. I would imagine we would make a lot more progress this year. And uh, we, we should have 
uh, you know, 20 or 30 more, I, um, I would expect by uh, this time next year. Uh, one of the other projects I've been working on for this year is Epic Ireland. Um, uh, two years ago we made a major submission to the Irish government to uh, recommend that they uh, develop a diaspora centre. Uh, th there were several candidates around Ireland, uh, one in the Docklands, another in Dunleary, uh, in, in Tullamore, in Cork, in Galway, etc. Uh, eventually the, the government backed out of the project. Right. However, all's not lost. Um, a major um, uh, entrepreneur stepped forward. This was Neville Istfeld. He is the ex-chairman of Coca-Cola. Uh, he bought a landmark building in Dublin, which is called the CHQ building. Uh, it's one of the largest Georgian buildings in, in Dublin. It's an absolute beautiful building. It was the location where uh, the largest bank banquet was ever held in Ireland. It was for the returning Crimean soldiers. And uh, so they, they, the project is to build a, a digital diaspora centre there. So there, there will be no traditional artefacts. There will be only digital artefacts. And it will be high tech. Uh, yeah. And, and so uh, for the speakers, we've organized a visit to this tomorrow. It, it won't be the uh, um, Epic Ireland won't be ready, but we will get a preview from it, uh, from the guy who's building it, um, Michael Cullohan. So, um, and the, the final thing, we see that uh, uh, sequencing genetics is becoming commoditized, it's becoming cheaper, uh, the cost is coming down. Uh, the bottleneck now is in the data and in the big data analytics. So I've spent a lot of time with um, uh, IBM uh, Watson uh, to experiment. We, the results so far have not been great. We still have a lot more work to do. And uh, I've, I've also engaged with the Insight Center for Data Analytics, which is uh, a group funded by the Irish government. They have about 80 million in funding and about 200 PhDs, and they're focused entirely on uh, big data analytics. Right. So that's how I, I see that we have the 20 minutes are up, and that's a quick um, update, and I'd be happy to take a couple of questions. Yeah. There we go. Um, thanks very much, Derek. It is absolutely fantastic to have you as our representative, because you work so hard to get a lot of the, uh, well, to move us into the future, really. And I'm really, uh, uh, really enthusiastic about visiting the Epic Ireland Centre uh, tomorrow on a fabulous day out because I think that could very well be a future uh, venue for an even larger Genetic Genealogy Ireland conference. So uh, that will be something that we will yep. hopefully explore with the uh, management of the Epic Ireland Centre. Yes. Um, do you have any particular thoughts on that yourself? Yeah, well, the, the, um, we, we did propose to do on-the-spot testing. <laughs> and we're thinking of using um, uh, Oxford Nanopore when it becomes ready for market so that someone could go, come in, do a test, and by the time they finish the, the visit, they, they would have the results. We are not there yet. We are not there yet. <laughs> However, so, that's the I'm idea. This is what talking about, Jared, all this stuff in the background. We only hear about it at these conferences. So I'm a Halloran, and M222 got a lot of sniffs down the line, the track. And then when looking at a lot of the surnames that are connected with uh, that back in time, you know, like the Y12, Y25, it all looks up north. So I'm kind of curious as to how M22 got characterized as Canuck. It appears that the, the history of the Hellens came down at least from Donegal and, uh, yeah, uh, and the associated names. From, from who? Came from County Donegal down to the Galway area. So they, came, they migrated into uh, the Canuck area, but how, why oh, is yeah, the they, M22 they, characterized as Canuck? Uh, yeah, they, that, I, I'm not an expert on M222. However, uh, from what I've seen so far, it would appear that it came from the Connacht area or, or, or the, the Connacht and expanded further north from there. Uh, the, na na yes. the National Geographic um, did a, uh, a sampling of Mayo. They tested 100 people and they found the absolute highest 
frequency of M222 um, uh, was in Mayo. So that's more on, on, um, on, the, on the Connacht side. I, I think there's a lot of work to be done. It's kind of dangerous to be assigning clans or tribes to SNPs at the moment. However, we are, we are doing the initial work on that. Um, I think this is all very, very exciting. And uh, the thing we forget, genetic genealogy is such a fast-moving field that when you talk about having your DNA tested as you come into the building and getting the results as you go out of the building, that is a realistic... That, that, that will come. It will probably take a few more years. But uh, someone has to, has to do the work to make it happen, right? Yeah. So, uh, so we will what we, we try to so so for Epic Ireland it will start with traditional genealogy when it opens in May of next year, but we are talking about introducing genetic genealogy into the community. and that's where people like the Main Irish Heritage Centre who've provided a template for cooperation between heritage centres, genealogy, traditional genealogy, and genetic genealogy. That's the sort of place where you could say, here's the template. We will educate you on how to set up your own particular project in your own particular area. So it's really exciting. We're going to have a really exciting couple of years ahead of us in genetic genealogy. Uh, just a question about Epic Ireland. Is that going to be run as a commercial? Uh, yes, it is commercial. Um, they, they have invested a lot of money. I, I think it, they bought the building for 10 million, they're investing 20 or 30 million into it. Uh, it, it was a, uh, uh, after the crash, the property crash here in 2008, uh, the government had previously invested 50 million in it and it was sold for 10. Right? So the, the, the people who bought it got a good deal and they were investing in it and um, uh, it should be a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the most confusing things uh, is the uh, proliferation of names among the snips, every couple to design on its own. Even white folk, which is kind of blue and black, is using its own designations. So uh, is, is ISAC making some effort to uh, to correlate them, I believe? Is that true? Yeah, well, there, 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 there are several. Um, uh, the academic community uses the S notation, as you know. Uh, the ISOC, uh, I think I'm a fairly up-to-date tree. There are several options available. Um, uh, the the, the Muso team in, in the Benelux, they produced another team for the forensic genealogy community. And we have white folk who have produced their uh, uh, one. Yes, the location is confusion, confusing. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's not perfect uh, at, at the moment, but there, there there are a lot of people working hard on that. I, 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 know, I, I know that Alice is no longer doing it nice on We'll have a much better idea of the situation in uh, November when we attend the Family Tree DNA yes. conference in Houston. But not only is there a confusion of SNPs, there's a confusion of SNP names as well, with a variety of different people naming SNPs and no particular international standard available currently. So, um, yeah, the situation yeah. is confusing. The best organization to do it is ISOL, right? Because of its local nature and its connection into uh, all that. And it's not a commercial organization. Right. Uh, I've I worked in the telecommunications industry, and if we didn't have naming standards, we wouldn't be able to make a phone call. So, uh, we absolutely need these naming standards. So, I'm going to have to cut it uh, there because we have Linda Kerr speaking to us now on uh, DNA for Beginners. So, I'm going to announce that and then try and get people in here. But please, can you show your appreciation for Jared Corcoran, our Irish.